musical accompaniment. <laughs> If you lived in St. Louis area and you couldn't attend the ball games in 1941, you'd likely be listening to Dizzy Dean on the St. Louis Cardinals radio network, also the St. Louis Browns baseball radio network. You'd hear old Dean singing the Wabash Cannonball, read telegrams to good old boys, and butcher the language with words like batter swing, pitchers throwed, and runners return to their respectable bases. Or a certain batter had an unorthodox stance. The St. Louis Board of Education tried to take Dizzy Dean off the air because of his use of the English language. Once while watching Eddie Lopat pitch, Dizzy said, see if you can tell why he gets everybody out. If you can't, old Diz will tell you. Figured it out? Testicle fortitude. Well, I think you know what I mean. There was a time that Dizzy Dean was calling a Cardinals-Cincinnati Reds game, and the Reds loaded the bases with Ted Klazuski, Bob Borkowski, and Fred Bozuski. I was sweating, Diz said, hoping that nobody would get a hit so I didn't have to pronounce those names. The ball was hit toward left center field. There was a long drive, and here's Gene Kirby to tell you all about it. Dizzy Dean went on to be given the NBC Game of the Week assignment with Buddy Blattner, and then Buddy Blattner left the team and Pee Wee Reese joined. It was Pee Wee Reese and Padna. So Dean was the voice of the Cardinals and Browns, later the New York Yankees, and then CBS and NBC Game of the Week, working from 1941 through 1965. He was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1953 as a player. Maybe he should also be in there as a broadcaster. Welcome to Game 13 of the National League Double Elimination Tournament. This is App O'Brien with the App Baseball Classics channel. Here are your starting lineups today for the St. Louis Cardinals, who are in Wrigley Field to take on the Chicago Cubs. For the St. Louis Cardinals, Terry Moore will lead off and play center field. Jimmy Brown's at third base. The big cat, Johnny Myers, will play first base. John Hippity Hop will be in left field. Enos Country Slaughter in right field. Marty Marion, the shortstop. Creepy Crespi, the second base. Gus Mancuso is the catcher. And Lon Warnicke, the pitcher, he is a grade B with no modifiers. For the Chicago Cubs, Phil Cavaretta will lead off and play right field. Lou Stringer is the second baseman. Stan Hack will bat third and play third base. Bill Swish Nicholson is in left field and hit fourth. Babe Dahlgren is at first base. Nicholas Dimdom D'Alessandro is in center field. Mac McCullough is the catcher. Bobby Sturgeon bats eighth and plays shortstop. And Charles Chinsky Root on the mound. He's a grade C with a wide mo y modifier. The Cardinals are fielding column one and the Cubs are fielding column three. We're going to use basic APA and 
as usual, we'll use the uh, master stealing ratings, also base advance. And I'm using the merino boards, again, with D equaling 3, C8, B13. Um, I just think it goes smoother. I don't like to add up all the numbers every time somebody gets a hit. So I'm good with basic kappa. Here we are. This is going to be an elimination game. I think we're ready to play ball, so let's play ball. In the box for the St. Louis Cardinals, leading off is Terry Moore. 64 is a swing and a miss for strike three. Jimmy Brown. 25 is the roll. That's going to be a base hit for Jimmy Brown. He's an R31 steel writing. The R means he hardly ever goes. Johnny Mize is your hitter. One down. Here's the pitch to Johnny Mize. 24 is going to be a strikeout. Mal Warnecki takes his warm up tosses for the Cardinals. He's the only person to play in an All Star game, a World Series game and also umpire in an All-Star game and World Series game. Phil Cavaretta will step in the box for the Cubs. There's the pitch to Phil Cavaretta. 22 is going to be a base hit. Lead-off signal for Phil Cavaretta. Lou Stringer is the batter. And my cards fall on their face. They do that about once a game. Here's the pitch to Lou Stringer. 54 is going to be a fly ball to Ina Slaughter in right field. Makes the catch. It's not deep enough for the runner to advance. One away. Here comes Stan Hack. He is one of the hottest hitters in the tournament. He is 9 for 13 with a triple, two doubles, and four RBI. 56 is a swing and a miss for strike three. There's two away. And that comes to Bill Swish Nicholson. Chicago left fielder. Here's the pitch. 1-4 is a fly ball to left field. Johnny Hippity Hop makes the catch. We go to the top of the second inning. No score. Charlie Root returns to the mound for the Cubs. And yes, he is the man who delivered Root Bay Bruce, famous call shot in the 32 World Series. I think he would dispute the details. Here's the pitch to... Enos Slaughter, 34, is a fly ball to center field, caught by D'Alessandro, one away. Marty Marion, the Cardinal shortstop, 51, is a 9 against a grade C pitcher. That's going to be a 34, that's a wide modifier for a strikeout, two outs. Frank Creepy Crespi. 22 is a base hit for Crespi. Gus Mancuso, he is the eighth place hitter. 55 is an eight against a C. That's going to be a single. The runner is going to go to third. That brings up the pitcher, Lon Warnecki. One three is a swing and a miss for a strike three. We go to the bottom of the second inning. No score. Babe Dogren leads off for the Cubs. 26 is a ground out to the St. Louis third baseman, Jimmy Brown. One away. Here is Dundon D'Alessandro, 5'6", 168 pounds. 55 is going to be a fly ball to center field caught by Terry Moore, who plays a shallow center field for the Cardinals. Mac McCullough. 1-6 is a ground out to the shortstop, Marty Marion. For the top of the third, nobody scored. Terry Moore steps in the box. He struck out his first time up. 
294 hitter in 1941 26 is a ground ball to the third baseman Stan Hack. Fires over to first base. One away. Jimmy Brown. 62 is a fly out to the left fielder Bill Nicholson. Two down. And Johnny Mines. Cardinals have had three hits, but have not been able to put them together. Enough to score. 35 is a 9. That's going to be a Y strikeout. And Mize is a strikeout victim for the second time. We go to the bottom of the third. No score. Bobby Sturgeon leads off the third for the Chicago Cubs. 36 is a roll. That's going to be a pop out to the second baseman. Creepy Crespi for the first out. Here is Charlie Root. 55 is going to be a base hit for the pitcher, Root. Phil Cavaretta. One down. 15 is a 8 against a B. That's going to be a play result of 27. 5 to 3, ground out to third with Root going to second. Now there's two outs for second baseman Lou Stringer. Lou Stringer is 4-4-14 four, four, in the tournament. He's got a double and three RBIs. 43 is a ground ball, I believe, back to the pitcher. It is 1-3. For the third out, we go to the top of the fourth. Cardinals nothing, Cubs nothing. Johnny Hopp leads off the Fourth inning for the St. Louis Cardinals. He died in 1986 in Scotts Bluff, Nebraska, which is my wife's mother's hometown. Here's the pitch to Hippity Hop. 1-4 is the roll. That's going to be a fly out to Bill Nicholson in left field, one away. It's been five hits in the game. They were all singles. No score yet. Country Slaughter. 24 is a fly ball to Nicholson. That's two away. And Marty Mary in the shortstop. 34 is a fly out to D'Alessandro in center field. We go to the bottom of the fourth, no score. Stan Hack leads off for the Cubs, 317 hitter in 1941. 44 is going to be a base hit. That makes him 10 for 15 in the tournament. That's a 666 average. Heck is a F26 steal. It means he won't be going until around the seventh inning if he steals at all. Here is Bill Nicholson. Bill Swish Nicholson's not a good hit and run opportunity. Um, he did strike out a lot. Here is a pitch to Nicholson. 26 is a ground out to the second baseman. Creepy Crespi, who flips to the shortstop to get a hack, four to six. Fielder's choice on the play. One down, and now Nicholson's the winner at first. Here's Babe Dahlgren. 43 is a ground ball back to the pitcher. One to three, runner goes to second. Here is Dimdon Alessandra. With two outs, 25 is a 8 against a B. That's going to be a out. 26 is the result. Ground out to second base, 4-3. to three. We go to the top of the fifth inning. It's the Cardinals nothing, Cubs nothing. All right, the bottom of the Cardinal order will bring their sticks to the plate. The face Charlie Root. Here is Creepy Crespi. 64 is a ball. One ball and no strike pitch. 64 is another ball. Two balls and no strike. 62 is a 22 feeling column. Three, that will test the catcher. McCullough is graded at seven, and that means he's a feeling column. Two, that's a strikeout. One away. 
Gus Mancusa. 41 is a ground ball to the shortstop. Two outs, and now the pitcher, Lon Warnicke. 53 is the roll. That's a 21 that will test the first baseman, who is Johnny Mize is a four. That's feeling column one. That's going to be out at first, unassisted. For the third out, we go to the bottom of the fifth, no score. All right, I did that wrong. It's not Johnny Mize. He's sitting on the bench. First baseman is Babe Dahlgren, who is a same rating, so that's an out. Okay, in the bottom of the fifth, the Cubs have the bottom of their lineup. Clyde McCullough coming to bat. 21 is the roll. That's a ground ball to third. Five to three, one out. Second baseman, Bobby Sturgeon. 44 is a fly out to the center fielder, Terry Moore. Two away, and here is Charlie Root, who has a hit. He's one for one in the game. 42 is a swing and a miss for strike three. Go to the top of the sixth. Neither team has been able to mount anything against these pitchers and no score. Terry Moore will lead off for the Cardinals. 65 is a pop out to the catcher. One away. Sorry for hitting the camera there. All right, that brings up Jimmy Brown. 24 is a fly ball to center field. Caught by D'Alessandro, two down. Here is Johnny Mize. 65 is a pop out to the catcher McCullough. We go to the bottom of the sixth, no score. All right, Lyle Warnicke in this tournament, he pitched a shutout his first time out, and so he's working on his, this will be his 15th inning. He gets through it without allowing a run. Here is Phil Cavaretta. 1-3 is going to be a base on balls. I may have just jinxed Lon Warnicky. Lou Stringer will be the hitter. No 11s on Cavaretta's card. 35 is a base on balls. First and second for the Cubs. Nobody's out. And the very hot Stan Heck will step in the box. He is 10 for 15 in the series. If there were two outs, he probably declined to pitch the Heck, but there's no outs, so here's the windup and the pitch. 64 is a base on balls, and Lon Warnicke has walked the bases loaded. Bill Nicholson. Cardinals will play the infield back. Try to get a double play. Try to minimize the damage. Here's the pitch to Nicholson. 62 is a swing and a miss for strike three. One out, and Cardinals continue to play their infield back. They will face Babe Dahlgren. 1-1 one, one roll. That's a five against a Ray B. That is going to be a double, and let's see, that clears the bases. It is suddenly the Cubs three and the Cardinals nothing. Yep, he's the man on May 2nd, 1939, that replaced Lou Gehrig in the Yankee lineup. Dom D'Alessandro will step in with Dahlgren on second. Still nobody out. Here's the pitch. 22, that's going to be a base hit for D'Alessandro. And it's now Chicago 4, St. Louis nothing. The Cardinals will call timeout and go to their bullpen. Subway Sam Nahum will be the pitcher. He will have one out and a runner on first and be pitching to 
Clyde McCullough, the, cu the Cubs catcher, they have their same sided, so Nahan will be an A pitcher for this first batter. Here's the pitch to McCullough. One four is a fly ball to left field caught by Hippity Hop. Two down, here is Bobby Sturgeon. Nahum goes back to a B grade. One six is a ground out to the shortstop, Marty Marion. But not until the Cubs score four runs on three walks, a double, and a single. We go to the top of the seventh, Chicago four, St. Louis nothing. Pitcher Charlie Root will lead off the bottom of the, or wait a minute, Root's pitching. Johnny Hopp will be leading off for the Cardinals. The top of the seventh inning here is Johnny Hopp. 63 is a fly ball to D'Alessandro in center field. One away. Enos Country Slaughter comes to bat. Slaughter is 7 for 25 in the tournament. 44 is going to be a base hit for Country Slaughter. And if St. Louis is going to chip away at this lead, they need to start now. Here is Marty Marion, the shortstop. G31 stealing rating for Slaughter. The G means that um, needs to be two out, minus one, or tied in the eighth inning or later. So he's not going. Here's the pitch to Marion. 32 is a 26. That's going to be a 4 to 6 fielder's choice. Marion is the batter, or is the runner at first, rather. On the fielder's choice here is Creepy Crespi. 55 is going to be an 8. That's going to be a single, and the runner will go to third. Catcher Gus Mancuso. Mancuso will be called back to the dugout with two outs. There'll be a pitch hitter. That'll be Stan Musial. He had 47 advance in 1941. And he had 426. If we get to the, if the Cardinals get to the championship game, he'll play in that championship game as he was on the roster at the end of the season. Here's the pitch to Stan Musial. Runners are at first. Crespi, Marion's at third. Here's the pitch from Root. 25 is a seven. That will score Marion and send Crespi to second. And the Cardinals are on the board. It is four to one. All right, the pitcher Nahum is due up. He will be pitch hit for, and the pinch hitter will be Walker Cooper. There's two outs, Musial at first, Crespi at second. Here's the pitch. 51 is a 9 and gets a great C. That is going to be a, I think that's going to be an out. 26 is a pop-up on the infield, caught by the second baseman, Lou Stringer. That's the third out. Cardinals get on the board. We go to the bottom of the seventh. The score is Chicago 4, St. Louis 1. As we go to the bottom of the seventh inning, there are going to be some changes for the St. Louis Cardinals. First of all, the new pitcher is Max Lanier. He is a grade B pitcher with an X modifier. And if you're scoring at home, put Max Lanier in the fifth batting spot. He is taking the replace of Enos Slaughter. Playing right field for the Cardinals is... Stan Musial and in the catch for the St. Louis Cardinals is Walker Cooper. Cooper will be batting, uh, Musial will be batting eighth in the lineup in that Cuso spot, and Cooper is batting ninth in the lineup. The pitcher Lanier will be hitting fifth in slaughter spot. Okay, we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Charlie Root will lead off. He is one better away from his point of fatigue, but the Cubs are going to stick with him. He's got a 4-1 to one lead. Here's the pitch from Max Lanier. 1-4 is a fly ball to left field that is caught by Johnny Hopp. 
for the first out. Phil Cavaretta. 56 is a 34 is a pop out to the shortstop. Marty Marion makes the catch and two are retired to second baseman Lou Stringer. 1-1, one, one, that's a hit column roll. 1-2 is a single. We've only had one extra base hit in this game. That's a double by Dave Dahlgren. Stringer's on first with two outs. F24 in stealing. There's Stan Hack there. Hack is one for two, also has been walked. 65 is a foul out to the catcher. We go to the top of the eighth inning, Chicago 4, St. Louis 1. Terry Moore leads off for the Cardinals in the top of the eighth. 42 is the roll. That's going to be a base on balls. And now if two bad things happen to Rook, his grade will go down one. And to look down the foul line, we see a left-hander warming up in the Chicago bullpen, Johnny Schmitz, and a right-hander, Jake Moody, is also loosening up. Jimmy Brown comes to bat for the St. Louis Cardinals. No outs, and Terry Moore on first base. Here's the pitch to Jimmy Brown. Moore is off and stealing on a hit-and-run play. 52 is the roll. That is a 27. And the ground out to third base, 5-3, to three, with Moore going to second. One away, the big cat, Johnny Mize. Here's Ritz pitch to Mize. 26 is the roll. That's going to be a fly ball to the right fielder, Phil Cavaretta. Two down. Johnny Hop. 44 is a 7. That's going to be a single for Johnny Hop. And that will get the runner more home. Cardinals cut the lead in half. It is four to two. Chicago still leads by two. The Cardinals will look to their bench and bring in Harry the Hale Walker to pitch hit for Max Lanier, the pitcher. There's two outs. Off at first. 21 is the roll. That's going to be a 12. Three, three unassisted to first base. Ground out to first base. So we go to the bottom of the eighth. It's now St. Louis trailing the Cubs two to four. All right, now pitching for the Cardinals is Howie Chris, grade C pitcher, no modifiers. He'll be facing Swish Nicholson, Babe Dahlgren, and Dim Dom D'Alessandro. There's a pitch to Nicholson in the bottom of the eighth inning, 23 is a ground ball back to Christ, who throws over to Johnny Mize at first for the first out. Babe Dahlgren will step in the box for Chicago. 26 is the roll. That's going to be a ground out to the third baseman, Jimmy Brown. That's two outs and Dim Dom D'Alessandro. 14 is a fly ball to Johnny Hop in left field. He makes the catch. We go to the top of the ninth inning. Cardinals are down by two at Chicago 4, St. Louis 2. The Cubs will bring in a new pitcher to try to close this game out. His name is Johnny Schmitz. He's a grade A pitcher with an X and W modifier. And the tall shortstop for the St. Louis Cardinals, Marty Marion, will lead off the ninth inning for St. Louis. Two runs down. Here's the pitch from Schmitz, 25 is a 8 against a, a pitcher. That's going to be a fly ball to D'Alessandro in center field. Marion is the first out. Creepy Crespi. 43 is a ground ball back to Schmitz, who throws 
over to Dahlgren at first. There's two down. And the Cardinal's last hope is stay on the man usual. He wasn't yet called the man though. 24 is a fly ball to center field. And it is caught by D'Alessandro. And that's the final out of the ball game. Final score of the Chicago Cubs 4 and the St. Louis Cardinals 2. We'll be back with a wrap up. All right, in this game, the Chicago Cubs eliminate their rivals, the Redbirds. Redbirds will get back on the Abraham Lincoln GMNO train and head back, go back to St. Louis, eliminated from this double elimination tournament. In this game, they scored two runs on seven hits and no errors. The Cubs scored four runs on six hits, and they committed no errors. The winning pitcher was Charles Root. He pitched eight innings, gave up two. And the losing pitcher was Lonnie Warnecke, who pitched a shutout in his first appearance in the tournament. But he is a loser in this game. Your star of the game is Charlie Root, who pitched nearly a complete game, uh, gave way to Schmitz, who, Johnny Schmitz, who got a save. But Charles Root is the star of today's game. So in the double elimination tournament for the National League, there are only two remaining teams. They are the Chicago Cubs, 3-1. and one, And in their next game, they will go to Brooklyn, to take on the Brooklyn Dodgers, who are 3-0. and Our next game, which will be posted Monday, will be the Cleveland Indians at the New York Yankees. Cleveland's 3-1. and New York is 2-1. and Cleveland will get Bob Feller on the mound. And um, there are only three remaining teams in the American League. The Chicago White Sox, New York Yankees, and Cleveland Indians. Chicago 3-0. It's possible that the defending 1940 National League champions Chicago will win this tournament and face the, excuse me, Chicago Cubs will win this tournament in the National League and face their crosstown rival, the Chicago White Sox, in the championship. That'll do it for us today. Thanks for joining us. Hope you liked it. Please hit subscribe and the like button and the notification button if you'd like to see these videos. Uh, my name is Apple Ryan. This is the Apple Classics channel saying so long and God bless.